Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Still uh, time for us to check out the papers this morning. We call it Off the Press. As always, we would have Ezekiel Nyai took who joins the conversation. He's a public affairs analyst and he will be helping with the analysis on some of the national stories and big stories this morning. But I'd like to start off with the Punch newspaper and as always, the attention would be on the top stories. Uh, looking at the banner caption for the Punch newspaper this morning, Lai Aregbeshola, Yari Kiamo lose out, APC inaugurates state chairman. That's what you find as a bold caption. But the issue of having the national convention uh, that was slated for the 26th of February is still in question and quite shaky. Underneath you have several riders. I have been invited for inauguration. I am in Abuja. Abdul Razak led group chair has quoted. A Biodun Omo Agege faction set for inauguration. I'm also other groups in limbo. Inauguration unfortunate and factions lament. One APC against contempt of court. Now, these are the riders underneath that board caption on the punch this morning. Away from that, you have FEC, that's the Federal Executive Council, approves 200 and, I beg your pardon, Federal Executive Council approves 328.87 railway consultancy services and uh, you were looking at 115.4 billion naira Katsina Road dualization. And you also have federal government, states, local government suffered 267 billion naira shortfall in the 2021 FAC allocation. Senate laments killings, abductions, and demands fighter jets deployment. So, I mean, security experts have constantly question, uh, questioned, you know, the strategy that's been put out, you know, by the federal government in tackling the issue of security. And the big question is, I mean, with the use of fighter jets, as, as brilliant as that sounds, does that solve the problem? Uh, does that really solve the problem? What kind of war are we faced with at this point in time? Uh, but of course, the issue of security is very sensitive and you don't expect the government to come out to begin to tell you their strategies. Away from that, we're still looking at the Punch newspaper this morning. You also have federal government request $600 million World Bank loan to fight erosion orders in Northern State. Now, now, that's also on the Punch newspaper. Ogun student protesting abduction and stone police van barricade highway. Now, the issue of security, just as we, talk, we talked about, is also very, very uh, paramount here. Now, Lagos court strikes out 226, rail, 226 million naira railway vandalism case over jurisdiction. And that will also be on the punch news for this morning. While you have the Quara local government Keteke chairman arraigned for five million naira inherited debt, nine killed in Ogun tanker explosion and all the road crashes. This is according to reports that's been made available on the punch newspaper this morning. Aviation union vows to ground flights February 8 over minimum wage and others. I'm hoping that we have, you know, a very robust conversation uh, as regards the aviation sector. And just away from that, commandant withdraws rep security details for proposing NSCDC scrubbing. Uh, that's also another issue you have on the Punch newspaper. And Ogun Oyo to establish security team, plan CCTV on highways. Ex-convicts, others arrested for armed robbery, rape and murder in a kitty state. Now, it's really very sad. And uh, you also have um, Lagos. I think we, we took all of that, but that's the much we can take this morning on uh, the Punch newspaper. Away from the Punch newspaper this morning, quickly, let's also take a look at the Daily Independent. Buhari to Northeast, you will know peace in coming month. Uh, that's what the president is quoted to say. Buhari to Northeast, you will know peace in coming months. 
boldly uh, captioned this morning on the Daily Independent, and that's the statement from the president. You might just say this, that's some assurance. PDP will be fair, just in choice of presidential candidate, that's according to party. But the big issue surrounding the conversation and the, the People's Democratic Party, one of the dominant parties as, the, as long as the Nigerian political uh, affairs concern, some persons are saying, will there be a consideration in the People's Democratic Party to zone the office of the presidency to the South? Uh, when you look at the issue of rotation and zoning, some people would say that that's not considered institutionally recognized and you want to agree with that a gentleman's agreement but would the people's democratic party factor the issue of zoning of uh you know the office of the presidency to the southeast region fingers across we see how things actually unfold and still staying with the daily independent newspaper let's also check out that writer this morning underneath that caption and the writer reads so you also have avoid zoning as criteria for leadership selection that's what lamido scored to say i mean it, it feels like we're just contradicting a lot 2023 elections abdus salami abubaka warns politicians against overheating polity uh, that's what you find this morning away from that 2023 dying Ndigbo presidency is great injustice that's what edwin clark has been very very vocal against the issue of i mean as regards the issue of zoning and the presidency for the southern region. Federal government approves the resumption of flights by Emirate into Nigeria. Ethiopian Airlines return B737 MAX aircraft 35 months after crash. Uh, some people would say that's a good one for the Nigerian economy. Ogun Oyo to install CCTV on highways and raise border security tax force. IPOP court finds Attorney General of the Federation 200,000 naira over shoddy trial of Kano's co-defendant. <laughs> All right. Senate acts federal government to bomb bandits out of their hideouts. Move to establish commission to cater for poor age Nigerians. Now, the Borno state government, uh, governor as regards all of this, has also come out to say that uh, the repentant book, I mean, repentant bandits have truly repented. And the big question that's been put out to him is, how do you know these persons have truly repented? What happens to the law? Uh, why can the law take his cause? Because over time, you have security experts and others arguing for the fact that the constant um, exemption, the constant uh, body language has been given to this person who perpetrate this crime has constantly emboldened and encouraged a lot of people to be engaged in uh, you know, the issue of crime and criminality in the country, especially in the northern part of the country. But that's so much we can take this morning on the Daily Independent. We quickly move away uh, from the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Let's also check out uh, the leadership newspaper. Quit race, southern leaders tell Atiku Tambawal and, uh, and Sariki orders. Quit race, southern leaders tell Atiku Tambawal, Sariki orders. Reps, uh, this, this is as regards, you know, the declaration of interest to run for president. Northern youths came for Vice President Yomiyo Sibanjo Tunubu Amechi. I am not eyeing Vice President slot on the article. Wiki is quoted. Article visits IBB in Mina. And you also have the ex APC reps from uh, New Block. CBN ratifies Ahmed Abdullahi's appointment as the FBH Hold Co Chairman. And cool scares or Kuskar in guinea bissau whereabouts of President uh, Unknown. Well, because as of yesterday, the report on the table says uh, that the President said he was actually safe. I mean, everything was in control. It was uh, a coup that was attempted, but he failed. However, because you have security personnel who had everything in control. But different report, however. Fingers crossed. Let's see how all of this pan out for us. And just before we move away from the leadership newspaper this morning, reps cheat President Mohammed the Buhari over unapproved spending of nation savings. Very sad. Killing Sultan seeks effective implementation of security policies. And you also have the United States launches no interview visa renewals for Nigerians. 
Uh, some people will say that's a good one, but let's see how all of that pans out. And just uh, before we have Ezekiel Yai to share his thoughts, we quickly check out the Nation newspaper this morning. Take battle to bandits, orders Senator Service Chiefs. Constantly, we have heard of instructions from the president, and now we also have the Senate telling the service chief take battles, you know, to the bandits. But has that really solved the problem? Have we seen any improvement? Is the question you want to ask. Kidnap suspect shot dead after short shootout with security operatives in Bini Auchi Road. I know. Uh, you also have Osh Oshun APC, a Regba Shola group, loses out in court. And the Federal Executive Council approves $328.87 million for railway consultancy services. And uh, we'll just quickly take this one. Nobody can zone PDP presidential ticket, says Lamido Tambuwa. We need a competent leader. Hmm, quite interesting. But that's the much we can take this morning on the papers. Let's quickly have Ezekiel Yai Tuk, who's on standby, share his thoughts on some of the top stories on our national dailies. It's good to have you join us, Ezekiel Yai Tuk. Thank you. I was feel privileged to be on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. But let's start off with the Nation newspaper this morning. Take battle yeah. to bandits, or does uh, Senate tell service chiefs? And, you know, it feels like the Senate is also towing the path of the president, where they are also asking that service chief need to act. All of these orders has been ongoing. But it feels like we're getting little or no results at the end of the day in terms of security. You see, there are two things that we must come to terms with in Nigeria. The very first thing is that government or governance has been over commercialized. That's the first thing. So that a lot of people in power, service is not their default mode. It's what I can get. And somebody will tell you that generals make their biggest kill in times of war. What we are having with the bandits, as much as it is ravaging the nation, as long as, as much as it is bringing us to our knees in more ways than one, because besides business, there's actually real honest threat to life on a daily basis. You know, if it's like, just give me the money, if you don't give me the money, I beat you up and then let you go, people are killed, actually killed in ways that if you hear the details, you really feel bad. While this is going on, of course, investors, when they say the president was going looking for investors at times like this, I just wondered, I mean, where they were going to come from. One of the first rules in rule investors is giving them a conducive environment, not even monetary, no, or fiscal policies, but first, human safety. Now, putting all these things together, some people are benefiting while this is going on. Some people that are having the supplies for the humanitarian services are making a kill and all these things. And to that extent, they put their personal interests far above the interests of the nation. For so long as these two groups of people exist, what we need is a leader that can communicate to Nigerians why he's got to take a very hard decision. I've been around the world, I've said this time and time again, I've never seen people as easy to govern as Nigerians, as believing as Nigerians, as easy to forget as Nigerians. I tell you, all they need is just be a little honest with me. Just tell me that you mean well. So that by the time we have a leader that means well, they will look at the root of every problem. And at the root of this insurgency are two problems. What are they? Number one, take the wind of their sail or you take the oxygen of their flame and they will die. What is the wind? What is the oxygen? It is the recruits that they have. Why do the recruits go to them? It's not because they believe in their ideology, but because they are hungry and they just want the means of livelihood. A time comes when a father kills a child to eat because one of them has to eat to survive. So the question is, who is going to eat who? Before we get to that level, how do we do solve that problem? 
let's look at honestly providing jobs for our children and creating an environment that gives them wings to fly. That's number one. Number two is the hard part. As a leader, you need to be able to take hard decisions. These guys have been emboldened to a point of no return. You can't start to you know, handle them with kids' gloves, no. The time has come when the government has taken the first right step that's declaring them as, as terrorists, because in international engagement where we are part, there are rules of engagement for bandits. It's different from terrorists. Terrorists, you can actually get a hard, you know, attack on them. If we've appealed to this, which we have appealed more than enough, we've got to know that there's got to be collateral damage. It's sad. I, I hate to say this. But if I'm going to eat this omelette, I'm going to have to break the shell as much as I love the shape of the shell. They've got to bomb those people out of that place. I unfortunately have to subscribe to that. Mr. President has said that the, um, the, the Senate has joined in saying that the question is, will the army generals accept that? And if they don't, what will be their reason? I think the time has come when we've got to close our eyes. I told the story of my friend who had an accident and they were trying to save the leg. And the blood was flowing too much. He had all the money in the world, but he could not last three hours. Eventually, he's got to say, you got to choose. Are you going to cut off the leg? Yes, if we take it to Germany and things like that, they will save the leg, but we don't have the time. What do we do? Keep it and you die or cut the leg. And it was an arm, actually. And today he has no arm, but he's, he's got a life. Let them bomb those who are We're going to lose some of our children, but I think the rest of our children will be able to sleep in peace. Hmm. But we, the next question would be, does that really solve the problem? Because, I mean, the issue of security, especially across the entire country, is encompassing. And so uh, what if that, you know, bombing of the, the region goes on or a particular location? Does that sort out the other problem? Is the problem I'll entirely tell you, solved? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. In, in, in life, some things are statements. As of today, we are romanticizing with this people and they're not taking us serious. When they know that the game is up, they will look for either another country or look for another trade. But as of today, they have no deterrent in life. Anywhere, they are setting global, you know what you call statute of general application. They are setting global standpoint. And that is you reward good deeds and punish bad deeds. The moment you have these two scales in your hand, the scales of reward and the scales of punishment, you discover that I grew up, I never drank, I've never taken alcohol. No, 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 that's not correct. I, I do wine. But in terms of beer, I've never had a beer all my life. Why? Be not because I'm such a nice guy. No, the fear of my mother. My mother, there's a Greek saying, uh, you don't understand Greek, so it simply means that child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. You know, you've got to know that, oh boy, this one, huh, if I try to, they will deal with me. The fear of my mother made me never to have smoked in my entire life, never to have had a bottle of beer. I think it was a while before I started drinking wine, you know, because I knew that a guy will catch me, and when she catches me, the king, man, no wonder the Bible says, pay the word and spoil the child. I think the federal government has been sparing the rod on this um, terrorist. And they've been spoiling that. When they bring out the big rod, they will not say, they will not change. <laughs> All right, let's look at the leadership as well. The issue of checks and balances is here on this one. Reps cheat President Mohamed Buhari over unapproved spending of the nation's saving. And one would think that the, 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 the government or the administration of President Mohamed Buhari and the APC administration would be strong on uh, obeying the law, I mean, the Constitution, uh, doing as the law would say, spending from the nation's savings account or the Federation account without approval. Uh, how do you describe that? I blame it on the, on the, on the, on the National Assembly. They have two over pampered Mr. President, I don't believe in a National Assembly that is unduly antagonistic. But I need a National Assembly that know that they were brought in there because 
and they are paid taxpayers' money because Mr. President or the presidency or the executive must not be allowed to do as they wish. One of the three basic or fundamental functions of the National Assembly, besides representation and lawmaking, is oversight. Oversight simply means that we have a budget, you run the budget, and going out of the budget is an impeachable offense. But Mr. President, like I just said earlier, feels anything can go. He can get away with blue mother. And for as long as he feels that, only as long as he has nothing to fear, just like the rich man does not fear justice because he believes I can buy it. These are the problems that we have. People need to sit up and play their role no matter whose ox is God. That is one of the biggest problems that we have. I, I, I got to an office where the auditor, I mean, stood up, I don't want to be specific, and I was so impressed. This guy was at the risk of losing his life, and he was just like, boy, this is not your company. He said, guy, this is what I was, you know, employed to do. If they fire me, God will tell, will know that I, I did what I was supposed to do. I'm not being antagonistic. I'm not being difficult. I'm just saying, let us follow the process like has been out that line. The day they change it, they communicate it to me. Now, that is what ought to be. As at today, Mr. President feels he is untouchable. We have over deified his office, oh, Baba, oh, or Ga, or, or, and it goes not just to the president, even the office of the governors. You know, they, they feel that they've got everything in their pocket and they can be very brazen and do anything as they wish. And it's wrong. So today you want to start uh, flexing your muscles. You don't need to talk. Take one action, one decisive action. And Mr. President will wake up. It's like, wow, wow, this is not possible. Now you are doing as if you are so helpless. Oh, Mr. President, you are begging, you are appealing, you are on, on all fours. What's that? Doesn't make sense. Sit up and be the national, you are expected, national assembly you are expected to be the, 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 the arm that checks the Mr. President or the executive. And when you do that, everybody will walk uh, uh, toe the line and do their jobs. But uh, Mr. Zika Yaito, how do we, um, I, I'd like that you explain if you have an idea how the spending should go. Now, before the executive arm of government takes from the Federation account or the president, should the National Assembly uh, not be aware or the lawmakers, is there a process? Who should actually go ahead to approve that? Is it possible that the executive will go ahead and take from the Federation account without the knowledge of, you know, other uh, arms of government? From my, I, I wouldn't want to go into details on that, but from my understanding, elementary knowledge of budgeting and where anything not appropriated for in the budget that you do is an impeachable offense. From my understanding, you present a budget to the National Assembly. After presenting the budget, the budget has two parts. It has income, it has expenditure. In the income, which is where we are having the problem now, you tell what your sources of funds are going to be. Now, there are certain statute bodies that are set up. For instance, the NSIA, um, uh, NSIA the, the uh, National NSIA, you know, the, the, I'm trying to remember the words. I, I know what it is altogether, but now, that is set up statutorily as savings. And if you are to touch that saving, the sovereign wealth, if you are to touch that, there are processes and procedures, and th those processes and procedures were set up to ensure that nobody just unilaterally dips his hands to the till. That's what we have, like the TSA. Everything is captured. It was to make for transparency and accountability. And before you can touch certain sums, you know, there has to be a process of approval that is given to you. Now, the Senate is being unhappy now because that process of approval is being jettisoned and Mr. President is acting unilaterally. All that is needed is just a letter because you don't want to be confrontational, you don't want to come to public. A letter to, to, the, to the executive saying, this is against this section of the law and it is an impeachable offense and this matter has been raised on the floor of the house.
house. We therefore advise strongly that you desist from following that route forthwith. If you do, we will have no option but to have you on trial, which is what impeachment is all about. Now, if he repeats that, you can give a second warning. By the third one, you actually, in, you know, uh, 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 go ahead and with, uh, 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 start the process. It is at that point that the Attorney General would be at liberty to go to court over the issue if he feels that they were right. And that is why we have that third arm, which is the judiciary. Now, when you go to court, they will interpret the laws, and the laws will say, well, there was a little lacuna somewhere, and the Mr. President took advantage of that lacuna. When that is done, they would have gotten themselves. The National Assembly can then go back, be a lawmaking body, to go and close that window that was open. I think that uh, my uh, possibly, I hope I'm still here. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good, good. It, it means that you have closed that loophole. And when you close that loophole and send it to Mr. President, he can decide not to sign it. And if he decides not to sign it, you can go back and veto it, in which case you have closed that loophole. That is what the law, the, the, the three arms of government, that is how they operate. That is what makes it possible. So there's a possibility that the president could probably, or the executive arm of government, could probably act on his own in terms of withdrawing funds that are not approved or budgeted for without the knowledge or the approval of the National Assembly. They've done it time and time again. They have done it time and time again. They've become so emboldened by it. And they are so brazen about it. Not just that. There are several other issues where the president has acted unilaterally. How about going to college? Are you aware that you cannot borrow any funds until it is approved? They are setting very stringent processes by the National Assembly. But time and time again, you see that Mr. President borrows one day, comes to them to, to, to ratify. You know, it was, um, I had a situation with, um, with um, a certain government. I was supposed to be paid money. And there was a certain urgency to it, and the accountant general, uh, at that time, I won't tell you which one, he said, pay documentation later. Okay? So I was paid the money, and the documentation was done. Of course, they trusted me, and I did act. But you see, it proceeds generally. Documentation should go through before payment is made. But you find a situation where Mr. President takes the decision, and then takes it to other people to go and ratify the decision. Is of the decision being ratified before it is implemented. And that's the way this National Assembly has acted, acted with the current executive. And it's not right. All right. Uh, just as we coasted out on the paper review this morning, let's also stay with the leadership. As we look at the uh, header that says, Quit race, sudden leaders tell Atiku, Tambuwal, Saraki, and others. Ezekanya, you know, what uh, are your you thoughts? Know, yeah. Yes, yesterday, uh, one of the reasons I rushed into Abuja was to attend some extremely vital and crucial meetings of national import. And um, in that meeting, something came up. A man was um, extremely furious about this issue of zoning or not zoning. And I told him, my guy, politics, unfortunately, is not morality. Politics is a game of numbers. That's number one. And number two, for as long as we talk zoning in our politics, it means that to that extent we don't have good governance. You know, nobody cares where you come from today. Nobody cares where the coach of the, of the, of the Super Eagles is from. All we want is a competent coach that can make us qualify for World Cup. That's all we care. That's why we can really remove our own son and then go ahead, go to probably Portugal or somewhere to go and bring. If, we, if our constitution did not stop it, I'll, I'll, I'll say if we can look Obama to come and govern us, you know. What am I trying to say? It is that in Nigeria, our constitution does not recognize zoning. Our governments have made governance such that there is no fairness, there's no equity, there's no justice. To all the to all nations of the divide, you know, or you no, know, what makes a country is that nations come together, different nationalities come to African nation, Ibibio nation, Ijo nation, the Kanuni nation, you know, and all those they come together. And when they come together, 
they subscribe to one man one vote and that is equality of all stakeholders so when you come in as the president of the federal republic of nigeria you come in as the father of all nations and nationalities there's no preference there's not my people their people no they all become that statements that uh, mr buhari made i wish he had animated and lived it i belong to all i belong to none that is the highest statement that the president can make. So within that context, nobody cares where you come from. We just want you to perform. That is one part of the divide. The second part of the divide is that, like I said, politics is a game of numbers. APC is stuck right now. Don't be surprised that everybody says no zoning because they're asking, you know, they're doing the maps, the north, the south. Where are the votes coming from? And they want to win. They don't want to be moralists. They want to win. As a result, we are asking ourselves, where do the votes come from so that in 2023 so that whoever comes in from our party will win that is the game today on ground nobody's talking morality all these zoning zoning things all you need to do like the south is they have stars they have people that i love that i i hold in high esteem moralu is there i've said this i like um, peter obi these are people that nigerians not politicians Votes are going to come from Nigerians. These are people that Nigerians feel, oh, these guys are nice. This is the young guy, Chuka, uh, Chukuka Moye. These are people that the young people are gravitating towards. So bring them up. Do you understand? It's our turn, your turn. Nobody's talking turn. We want somebody that is a CEO. We want to recruit a CEO for All Nigeria. Right, and, and then, <laughs> I wish we had more time uh, on the table so we can continue with the conversation. But it's really, really great. The, the, for me, I, I constantly do not understand. Yes, we say that the issue of zoning has not been factored into our constitution. And so it does not have any recognition uh, by the law. But this is some agreement that have been... Uh, you know being looked at is an agreement that has been respected from time to time when it comes to you know different region and so it, no, no, it, no. if it was that if it was that uh, exists, uh, uh, you know re no. respected jonathan should have done complete uh, two terms but i'm just saying that so, so what what then is the essence because i mean if you talk about the agreement agreements should be an agreement when you agree uh it, it no, should my, be my, it, it, if, if no, two no, people no. agree that they should act in a certain no. way, then they should. But of then course, we will constantly say that, uh, you know, uh, this is an issue of morality and it's not an issue of the law. And so um, it costs for a lot of consent because constantly you have different regions saying we have been marginalized and there's issue of not being fair, partiality, if you want to call Yes, as, as, as a major, major uh, opinion mode that you are, I'll tell you this for free, you are. If people listen to you, there's a mindset that you need to have to help us in this country. That mindset of understanding what government and governance is. Governance is about the management of the resources of the generality of the people of Nigeria, one. And secondly, of being fair to all the sides of the divide in Nigeria. Those two things. Number one, competence for the office. And number two, having the heart for the essence of government and governance. When you do this, you will not run the narrative of the sentiment of where a man comes from. Let the narrative be on who can... Right now, we have, we have our lives on life support. We've become the poorest country in the world, the poverty capital of the world. Today, our narrative should not be running. The, the media should not join politicians on the narrative of a north or south. They should be narrative of the most competent. Most competent. North or south, um, you know, narrative should take about 5%. Okay. I believe it's them. Ezekiel, Ezekiel Yaitu, so, I have to let you go now. But I'm sure that we'll probably have this conversation, you know, off camera. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the okay. show. And I do appreciate. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. God bless you.
All right, it's always uh, a great time to have Ezekiel Yai to share his thoughts on some of the national issues. And we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on the show. And uh, that's the size of it for the paper review. When we return, uh, that's shortly after what happened today in history, because we tell you that being the third day in the month of February 2022, uh, we will head straight to our first major conversation with the quota for oil production that's been put out by OPEC. Let's see how Nigeria is faring. I'll be right back. Stick around.